Giri Haji, or Duty Shame, is a BBC Two production that landed in England in, I think it was October 2019. And for a long while, we couldn't get it unless you were in England or, I suppose, VPNing their uh, iPlayer. Luckily, however, it did arrive on Netflix in January, I think on the 10th of January, so the entire world gets to watch it. And wow, I'm sure a lot of people are very happy about that. So what is this Giri Haji? Sounds very Japanese and foreign. Well, it is. It's definitely um, Japanese. And um, so it takes place in Tokyo in Japan, and it takes place in London. And um, I was very excited about this because it had the Yakuza in it, and I've always been quite intrigued about the whole idea of this Yakuza. Of course, a triad is, Jap is Chinese, and the Yakuza is Japanese. Lots of samurai swords in this, honor, cutting small fingers off, other fingers off, and people's heads as well. And it looked great um, as far as the, ad the trailer was concerned. What I found quite nice about this is um, it was taking place in London and it frequently flipped between English and Japanese. So if you are somebody who doesn't like subtitles, you might not like this um, very much. But I think with more renewed interest in um, foreign films, after the um, absolutely phenomenal Parasite one um, of the Oscars, I think a lot of people who don't like um, subtitles really need to put themselves into a position where they get used to it because after a couple of minutes, you don't even notice that they're there. As I say though, it does flip between Japanese subtitles, sorry, English subtitles, Japanese speak spoken, and English, though there are no Japanese subtitles. Kind of weird that actually. Anyway, so what is this about? Well, um, it kind of is all about how kind of like a, a sort of butterfly effect, I suppose, how one murder in Tokyo has these worldly ramifications. It basically takes place, as I said, in Tokyo, where a brother um, it ends up on the run and ends up in England. And he is thought to be dead for a short while. And a year later, they sort of find out, his brother finds out that, um, well, he's not dead. And this sparks the whole chain of events, basically, um, with the Yakuza wanting him um, because he basically murders somebody. And you, at the beginning, think, wow, this guy's a bit of an asshole. And he's a bit of an asshole, to be completely honest with you. But like I said, I don't want to go too much into the story over here. Um, I think you'll enjoy finding it out. What I will look at here is the themes and how it's put together. So one of the things I loved about this is that they use a lot of animation. When you look into the backstory of Yuto, for example, the younger brother who's on the run, you get this wonderful animated back thing, um, kind of like a flashback, but done in animation. And I really enjoyed that. They do it at the beginning of every episode as a last time on, and it works really well. I love it. It brings a definite sort of Eastern feel and theme to um, what is decidedly, yeah, I suppose 50-50 as a matter of fact. A lot of what happens in England is great, of course, you know, it's in London, you've seen London lots of times, and you've seen Tokyo too, and they really do a very good job of balancing it here. While main things are taking place in London, um, a lot of things are taking place in Tokyo. One of the bad sides of, of this is that sometimes the things taking place over there are slightly redundant, um, though that's difficult to say because a lot of those redundant things are I suppose they flesh out the characters. Um, in particular, you have Kenzo, who is the older brother. Um, he is kind of the protagonist in this, along with Sarah, um, and they are absolutely brilliant actors. Um, Kenzo basically is played by, I hope I get this right, Takihiro Hira, and um, Sarah is played by Kelly McDonald, both phenomenal actors in this. Kenzo is basically the lead protagonist in this. We follow him along with Sarah, who is a, a cop in London, and um, we sort of, yeah, I suppose they, they are the main focus of this, along with his younger brother, Yuko. Um, is it Yuko? Yes, Yuto, sorry. Um, those three are the main peeps in this. We also have Rodney. Um, Rodney is kind of an enigma in this because you have the whole Yakuza thing, which is very formal, very rigid, conservative society. And then suddenly you have this rent boy, his words. And he's one of my favorite characters in this, actually. He is a broken and... Um, sort of abused young guy who is, oh, shame, he's really down on his luck. And it's basically because of a lot of things that he's done for himself. He is a drug addict. He is into basically anything that you, well, as long as you're willing to pay, he'll do it. And um, his story arc is phenomenal in this. He's played um, by William Sharp, who is brilliant. Absolutely phenomenal. So at moments I had my, had sort of tears in my eyes. Um, and that's one of the things I love about the show is that you think it's just a standard Yakuza, you know, drug lord, a crime thriller, but it also has moments of absolute beauty in this. And as I said, Rodney gets to play up to a lot of these. Um, there are moments where you do not expect certain things to happen, like dance routines, for example, and other moments of music, which is just beautiful in this. That I don't know who the um, the sound score dude was, but um, it's really, really well done. The music throughout the entire thing works extremely well. The directing in this is beautiful. They do a lot of um, split screen things moving around, almost like a um, ocean's whatever number you want to choose um, heist going on with he's doing this, he's doing that, he's do you know they doing this, she's doing this. 
Um, and it works really well, especially when um, you're trying to ramp up the thrill, you know, is he going to get caught or not? There's also a brilliant um, gangster in London, Connor, played by Charlie uh, Creed Miles, I think it is. And he's brilliant in this. He is a bastard. He is a gangster lord sort of thing. But he definitely has an element of what you would find in a Guy Ritchie movie, that he's likable. Um, he has his own sort of path of honour, I suppose. You just have to tread really carefully around him. And he does bring a lot of charm to this um, otherwise quite um, mooted sort of affair. As I say, with Rodney in particular, he plays, um, as I mentioned, a very, very charming and very um, sort of just different to the conservative Japanese and the Yakuza. Um, and he also brings a lot of comic, comical elements to this, um, especially with um, Kenzo's daughter. Uh, what's her name again? Um, she arrives sort of halfway through, that's a Taki, um, halfway through the this, this series, um, I won't say anymore. Um, and yeah, those two sort of team up or pair up and uh, Rodney is absolutely hysterical in it, along with Connor, who also brings a lot of laughter to this. And um, that's what the show is. It's a very strange mixture. It's a mixture of a crime, a thriller. As I say, it's got this sort of avant-garde um, element to it too. And also a lot of comedy. At times I was laughing so much, I was like, is this supposed to be this funny? But Rodney is so bloody brilliant in this, and they give him such fantastic one-liners. He, he also um, happens to be um, half Japanese, so he manages to flip between speaking Japanese and English, and it, there's a lot of comical effect had while um, you know, he sort of takes advantage of the fact that some people do not speak English and some people do not speak Japanese. So anyway, the show, um, I think it was eight episodes. It is well worth watching. I highly, highly recommend it. I think it's sitting on 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. Not that that's a massive in indicator, but it is a pretty good indicator that the movie is universally loved. On the downside of things, I th there's not that much I hated about it. Um, I think some of the shock tactics that they do use in this, and they do use a lot of shock um, tactics, certain characters are killed and you're just like, what the fuck? How, how did that happen? What? Um, and then also you jump. Um, some of these scenes take place so quickly you don't, ex you don't see them coming. That is very well done, but it also sort of led to characters who got over things a little bit quickly. Um, and you kind of need to do that in a, sh a short season, you know. A character who's very close to someone will die, and um, the character will be like, oh, whoa, 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 and then they'll just carry on and like nothing has actually happened. Um, so, yeah, I can see why that, why it's like that, but, it, yeah, I suppose I could have worked on that a little bit. Um, I also, as I said very earlier, um, there are some peripheral characters who kind of got annoying. Um, there's a particular scene with three um, of the, of Yuko's, of, sort of Yuko's, of um, Kenzo's um, family in, in Tokyo who go on the run, and although it's interesting to watch and stuff, it really took away from things that I wanted to see happening in London. And there are some really big things happening. There's some great sh shootouts over there. So that was a little bit like, a, oh, now we've got to watch this. Can we please get back to the main action at hand? So that kind of deflected or deflated um, a little bit of the action and the pacing, I think. For me, however, this is an easy eight and a half out of 10. And as I said, definitely get out and watch it. I think you'll love it. Catch you guys later.